Hey there, we are so thankful that you chose to join us for today's message. Make sure you check us out online at wordoflife.church to learn more about who we are, what we believe, and what is coming up next. We are so excited because we believe God is going to use this service to speak new things into your heart today. Well, who, who in here wasn't here last week? Oh, all of you that weren't here last week, do you remember what I said last week? Ah, uh, Cindy got it. All right, we're talking about the five love languages. Real quick review. There are five of them. We hit four already. I'm going to real quickly say the first one, words of affirmation. Person's emotional love thrives on verbal compliments or words of appreciation or encouragement. I love you, look great in that outfit, and so on and so on. If your love language is words of affirmation, it will require you to talk in a positive, encouraging way to your spouse if it's theirs. It may not be yours. If your spouse's love language is words, you better start doing that right now and encouraging her or him. Number two is quality touch. This person's... What? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, I like it when people pay attention. All right. <laughs> hey, listen to this. I am going to talk about physical touch tonight, but not yet. <laughs> uh, forgive me if I get excited and try to get ahead of myself. Qual quality time. <laughs> My wife is here to help me. That's why she sits up front. <laughs> Quality time. This person's emotional love thrives on undivided attention from the one you hold dear. You enjoy watching TV with them, going out with them, eating with them, whatever you do. Sports, it doesn't matter as long as you do it together. This love language requires your willing time and presence. You got to be there. Number three was receiving gifts. This person that would have this love language craves gifts, something given to them. They can be just something you can hold in your hand or you can see sitting there in your house, a beautiful new kitchen cabinet, whatever. It's right there and they can see it every time they go over there. Oh, he loves me so much. You know, because they can see it. It's, it's evidence of that gift. All right. Number four, acts of service. This is one of my wife's top ones. This is an action language. You might get tired on this one because you're going to have to work. That's why I don't like it as much as she does. <laughs> The person with this love language thrives on the spouse or person that does things for them. And, you know, that you can't think of it as a job either. Forget that. It's an assignment from God. You need to do it. If you want your spouse to be emotionally filled with love, you're going to have to do it. I found out uh, she doesn't like the floors dirty, the carpets dirty, the vacuum. Yeah, she, yikes. Like I said, you're going to have to work. Sorry. And grumbling and complaining won't do it. It'll ruin it for them. This love language requires you to work or do something physical. So if you're lazy or low energy, just remember love is a choice. You're going to have to do it. And it will pay dividends. All right, number five, this is where we're starting tonight. Physical, what was that? Touch, touch physical touch. Do you ever meet someone that touches? You know, I'm, I'm half Italian. And I know a lot of Italians, and, you know, they, they're, I use my hands a lot. And, and they not only use their hands, but they're also touchy, you know, too. Well, I can remember, I like to tell this story about one of Paula and our uh, friends, and this one's name is Annette. 
and we were taking this Bible training center class together, and I'm sitting here, and she's sitting over here on my right. We're in this class taking it, and she's talking to me, and she's going like this, touching my arm and talking to me the whole time, and I'm thinking, oh, you want to rub my back too, you know, <laughs> because she, she just did that, but she didn't mean anything by it. Good friend, is she's just, she was a toucher. Well, the person with this love language, which is high on my list, with this love language, once touched, hugged, cuddled, handheld, etc. We hold hands, we're walking together at the mall. I touch her probably too much. And I've often said that when I'm 90, I'll still be chasing her around the house. The people with this love language feel unloved without that physical contact from the one they love. To them, holding hands, kissing their spouse, touching their neck, all of these things. Hugs are just a little touch or a pat when they walk by, they're hearing the words, I love you, dear, just by that touch. Well, I have to tell on Pastor Tom tonight uh, back, when, back when we were younger and our kids, all of our kids were young, and we used to run around and do a lot of goofy things together, but we used to ride, and every time we went somewhere, I'm going to tell him, Pastor Tom, he always wants to drive. He, he doesn't trust anybody else driving, so he wants to drive. So Paul and I were always in the back seat, but that was good because we got a bird's eye view and watched everything that they did or said. I took notes and I have it all written down. <laughs> Here we are sitting in the back seat and every once in a while, look at Deb, look where her arm is right now. And she'll be sitting there in the car and she'll just reach over right behind him. And next thing you know, her fingers will be crawling up his neck a little bit. And she'll start playing with his neck. And then she's going like this. And he's, and every, the whole time he's going like this. <laughs> and he's driving the car yet. Okay. This is a very easy love language to identify. And when people come in my office for counseling at different times, I'll watch them. And one of them may be in tears because of the problems that are in their marriage. And then I'll see one of them go like this. Reach out and begin to touch their spouse. And I'm over here going, physical touch on the right. <laughs> I'm already figuring out their love languages by the way they interact, things that they say, and things that they say that they don't do to each other. I got, I already figured out what their love languages are. To you, nothing can beat being held by your spouse in the time of crisis. Their hand or arm brings you comfort and love. We have two Italian dogs named Mia and Maggie. Well, I want to tell you first of all about Mia. Mia sometimes can be a little hard to take uh, because if there's fireworks going on or a car comes by, Maggie will start barking. As soon as she does, Mia gets all nervous, especially if the fireworks are a thunderstorm, and she will try to tear a hole in my leg like this because she wants me to pick her up and protect her. She just wants touched. She wants held. That's just her. But there is one thing that I have noticed about her. She also likes to look you right in the eyes. And I've heard, heard, been, heard been told that that's really not a good trait for a dog. They don't usually like to look. They like to look away. But this dog likes to look in your eyes. And when you're talking to her and she's right up here, I've also learned another thing, keep your mouth shut. Because <laughs> I'm serious, if you're right there, she likes to kiss. And if she's right there and you got your mouth open, I'll tell you what, she is fast, real fast. And I thought she was Italian and she's more French, I think. <laughs> also, we, we have a friend, our friend is uh, Cindy and Emily Rose. They couldn't be here tonight. She had to go pick up her husband at the hospital. They, they have dogs too, and I want to tell on their dogs, but 
you know what? They're really religious. She has the dogs. Their names are Noah and Caleb. I mean, here we are. We got these Italian dogs, and she got Christian dogs. <laughs> I, I think she led them to the Lord. All right. So anyway, uh, Noah's normal. Noah will come up. Oh, no, once petted, you just reach out and pet him. But here comes Caleb. They both come together. They're both big dogs. And I reach down to touch Caleb, and Caleb does a contortion. And she twists her body around in a U shape instantly. And instead of her head, you get the other end. <laughs> and she does it every time. It's just, it's just, it's not all she does every time. Well, you need that hug when departing or seeing each other after a long day apart. You love that hand on your shoulder or around your waist at a social gathering. Just the touch from your love can calm your heart. This love language requires you to physically have contact or touch your spouse. And if you're a person that doesn't like to interact in a touching way and your spouse does, well, you're going to have to stretch yourself a little bit because if your spouse likes to be touched and that's important to them, you're going to have to be able to do that. You're going to have to choose to do it because like I told you last week, love is not a feeling. I don't feel like touching you. No, love is not a feeling. Love is a choice. We have to choice. We have to make the right choice in the case of two spouses together. Well, how do you figure out what your love language is? You know, you're going to have to ask yourself some questions. First thing you have to ask yourself, what makes you feel the most loved by your, uh, your spouse? Every night you get near her and she goes, hold me, hold me, physical touch. You never buy me flowers. You never buy me cards, gifts. Whatever you're hearing, those words that you hear over and over from them, that's a hint. Don't give gifts to someone whose love language is words of affirmation. It's not going to do a bit of good. You can give them gifts till you're blue in the face. Number two, what do you desire the most? Quit cleaning the house and talk to me. She says, words of affirmation. Or you might hear, I need your help around this house. It's getting too much for me to do myself. Acts of service. I don't want to tell you a little story. I had a couple in my office one time that came in for counseling. And she wanted attention and quality time. Those were the two things she wanted from him but they weren't on the same page. So I had to do some talking to them. And he, he started to explain to me, he says, I have one job. And he says, I'm going to start doing this second job, which will keep me busy at night also. He said, but I have a five-year plan for our marriage. And after five years, we'll be set up and we will have the greatest marriage of anyone after that. And I said, you know what? That is a great idea, you having those two jobs and you being able to take care of your family after five years. I said, but there's only one little flaw in your plan. At the end of five years, you won't have a wife and you won't have a family. Because he missed the boat completely. He thought that the important thing would be to provide for her luxury and things when all she wanted was being held, and she wanted him to help around the house because those were her top two love languages. If you don't speak or fulfill your spouse's emotional love language, you may not have a spouse in the future. Number uh, four, next you could ask yourself, what does he or she do or say that hurts you deeply. He cuts you down in front of your friends. Words of affirmation. If she feels put down by you in a crowd or with people, 
That's something, number one, no one should do to anybody, whether their love language is words or not. But if they do that, you're, she's really hurt. She will really be hurt deeply if her love language is words. Never helps me, never buys me cards. Those are all hints. Another thing you could do is think back and recall what you seem to request of your spouse many times. Could you please take the garbage out? Acts of service. Please hold my hand. Later that night, please rub my back. Physical touch. Did you get me anything or buy me anything when you got home from a trip or wherever? Tell me again that you love me. They want to hear it. Would you please sit by me on the couch and quit doing whatever the, the other person was doing? Quality time. Come over here and tell me how your day went. Words. Uh, by the way, you need to know that wives have 25,000 words every day, where a man, if he has between 10 and 15,000, that was unusual. And so you can see what the problem is many times when she keeps asking you to talk to her. Number seven, also, what you do to your spouse, and this is very important, many times is an indication of what you want done to you. Pastor Sheldon and I were talking, and he was saying he would come home, and he would be straightening up the house, doing all these nice things for his wife and fixing things, he said, with a vacuum or whatever, and his wife would say, honey, come on over here and sit by me and talk to me. And he thought, well, he's thinking, don't you see all this stuff I've done for you? It, right. Well, that, that, that's not how it works. We think how we feel love must be how everyone feels love. That's human nature. So we try to love others with our love language. No, I know a story that I want to tell you about a very wealthy man who, very wealthy, he bought his wife a red Lamborghini and parked it out front, and it was sitting out there, and he presented it to her, and a day later, she ran off with the carpenter that was working at the house. Gifts didn't mean a thing to her. He was totally missing the point, and she found someone else and took off. In other words, what ways you show love is how you want love, but not necessarily your spouse. Now, after you do that, you list all five of them, but you pick your first one, that's number one, that means the most to you, then you pick your number two. Those are the main two that you really have to focus on for your, spou for your spouse to know what you need emotionally. But you need to have three, four, and five listed also, and in what order. And then your spouse is going to do the same thing. Then you share that with your spouse, what your love language is, and they'll share what theirs is. Compare and record the results on the refrigerator. Put them there. You're going to need to see them for a long time until you learn what their love language is and you begin to practice them. Now you're ready to put your new knowledge to work for a great relationship by meeting your spouse's emotional love needs. This may require you to stretch because if you're number one man and hers, that's her number five, you've got a problem. And what's that mean? That means this man is going to have a hard time getting his wife to do what he wants because she's going to find out that that's his love language, so now she has to work. And it's going to be a stretch for her, because that's her last thing she'd like to do, and that's what he wants the most. And so on, back and forth it goes. That's why you need all five of them listed on the piece of paper. Remember, it's not all about you any longer. If you want to be happy, you will start filling your spouse's heart with many deposits of love. Joshua said, choose you this day who you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua had to make a choice. 
And he said, me and my family, we will choose. And that's what we have to do in our love relationship with our spouse, we have to choose. The success of your marriage and happiness of your marriage is going to depend on it. It may require much effort and sacrifice on your part, but if yours are very close together, eh, it's going to be a piece of cake. But in the end, you will reap the benefits. A happy wife is a happy life. A king elevated on a throne has his wife ele elevated right beside him, and they roll together. You are a team, but you have to be more than a team. But in marriage, you should become much more than that. You should become best friends. Lovers, best friends, confidant, each of you the confidant of the other one, constant companion, the one you want to spend your life together with. And for all of those of you that are looking for a spouse, still looking, dating, I have a little secret to give to you. A secret to a good marriage is not finding someone to live with. And many, many, many people settle for that. They find someone to live with. The secret is finding someone you can't live without. That's the secret. If you find someone you can't live without and you need to be with them, then that should be high on your totem pole. And then you're really going to have found a treasure so I say, dating couples and married couples, make it happen. Love is a choice. Pastor Tom. Thank you, Pastor Kurt. You can pick up your paycheck at the office tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, um, you know, when the scripture says over in Genesis chapter 2, it says um, it's not good for man to be alone. And uh, I got to thinking about this. My wife knows better than to leave me alone for, very, for a very long time because she knows I'm bound to get into something that's probably going to be troublesome. And I just got to thinking about this, and, and I just happened to have a video uh, on my phone, and I forgot all about it, and it just came to my mind. And these guys were so gracious to work on it. We're going to, uh, I, I hope we can convey that, but um, this is some of the perhaps trouble I could get into when I'm left alone very long. Okay, can we show that? Are you tired of beater bars that just don't work? When you plug them in, they're old, they're worn out, they short out, you this can't sweep, me fixing they her turn sweeper. On, they turn off. Well, you need Tommy's quick fix beer bar solution. This is a patented solution to your beater bar problems. Just plug it in and watch it go. When you're done, just, just unplug it. And now, and now, oops, I need another hand. And now, now you can de detach your sweeper, uh, whatever this thing is. Sweep, it's not a hose, sweeper pipe, let's call it. Just with a simple pull on the extension cord and you got a fixed Sweeper, beater bar, all done, taken care of, absolutely awesome. You can get it today for just $29.95. Yes, folks, you just plug her in there, and off she goes. <laughs> By the way, if any of you are thinking about stealing that invention, it is patented, okay? So um, anyhow, she was having trouble with her sweeper and I figured I had about enough. So one day when she wasn't home, I began to operate. 
okay? And I tore the entire wand part of the sweeper apart. What would happen is that the, uh, the pins in this sweeper, they would get wore after a process of time, okay? And using the sweeper, so when you're sweet, as long as you were pushing the sweeper, it would run. But when you pulled back on it, the, the, the beater bar would quit working, okay? So uh, I dealt with this long enough. And I tell you, duct tape and electrical tape can fix anything, <laughs> all right? So I tore the thing apart. I figured, what do I have to lose? It's not working anyhow. And so I tore it apart and installed that extension cord in it to the point where you can literally expand the wand out now. And all you have to do is plug that baby in and off you go, all right? But the point about it, it works. Okay, it does not cut out any longer, and uh, so anyhow, that's um, that's the, uh, the 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 issue of the uh, uh, of the sweeper. Like I said, she knows better than to leave me alone very long because if there's a project, I'm digging into it, and it doesn't always turn out great. All right, but I have to tell you this: there was a uh, she was having problems with her. Her um, washing machine, this was a number of years ago, it was actually an old washing machine. And um, it, it, things just weren't working properly, so I, I tore the inside of the washing machine apart, fixed that thing with duct tape and a hose clamp, and it worked for two more years. So <laughs> They call me Mr. Fix-It, okay? Anyhow, so... Um, uh, <laughs> nonetheless, hey, listen, um, I, I want to move on here because I, I really don't want to run out of time because I want to in, 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 you know, bring our guest up for tonight. But um, I just want to encourage you. Some of the things that we talked about over the past several weeks, okay, is dealing in relationships, whether they be in relationships of a friend or two friends or different friends or a relationship, which is the ultimate of relationship in marriage. And as Pastor Kurt was saying that, you know, your wife, your husband should be your best friend. And I'd have to admit that my wife and I overall, uh, we do everything together. It, I mean, we just, we, we we're basically inseparable in many ways. And um, that's the way I like it. You know, I had someone ask me one time, how can you have, how can you handle your wife working in the same office as you? And I says, uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I think it's great. Absolutely great. The only problem is she's wearing my rug out running to the bathroom. All right. So um, we've got to have to have that fixed. And someone indicated that perhaps what I could do is put, uh, because they, they, they were so kind to me when they built my office, they, they gave me my own bathroom. And her office is right on the other side of the bathroom wall. And they said, well, why don't we, and she suggested, why don't we cut a door, okay, from her office right into my bathroom? That wasn't going to work, okay? That's, that's just no good. That didn't happen. And so, uh, uh, nonetheless, I want to see her when she comes into, into my office. And because eventually I'm probably going to have to charge her for all the time she runs in there and uses you know, my bathroom and, and the water there. So we're going to have to charge her for that. Anyhow. All right. So we talked about Jonathan and David, which actually speaks of an incredible relationship. And I want to review just very, very quickly about some of the things that make a great relationship like Jonathan, which Jonathan and David, which was really probably one of the uh, epitomes of relationships in the Bible. These guys just love one another as brothers, okay? In fact, the scripture says they loved each other as they loved themselves. They were, they were, and here's some of the qualities I believe that we found in that relationship with David and Jonathan. Uh, love, of course, is crucial in any relationship. Love, loyalty. Number three would be commitment. And I got to thinking about this today, that Commitment and loyalty, some people may think that it's basically one and the same, but it, it, it is not. And I got to thinking with Word of Life, the, the church, there are people that are loyal to the church. I mean, you don't want to say anything bad about Word of Life or the staff, the pastors of Word of Life, but they're not necessarily committed to the work of the ministry. They're not involved really with anything. They, they probably don't give much into the ministry. They... they uh, um, 
uh, they, they, they attend perhaps sporadically in many ways, but as far as their hearts are concerned, they're loyal to the ministry. And so there's a difference between loyalty and commitment. And I believe both need to work hand in hand in any type of relationship that's going to be lasting. Loyalty and commitment. Okay, number four we talked about and perhaps just hinted on, we didn't get too deep into any of these, uh, was sacrifice. Uh, and especially in a marriage, you're, when you're dealing uh, in a relationship in a marriage, it's going to take sacrifice. And oftentimes when young people come into a relationship or move into marriage, they don't realize the depth of sacrifice at times that they are going to have to make in order to keep this marriage alive and fresh and, and moving forward. And, and sometimes, and unfortunately, oftentimes, what happens is that the relationship begins to falter because one or the other or both really don't want to make the sacrifice that's being required of them. Change is going to be necessary, and that's where sacrifice comes uh, into, into play. I remember one, it's been many, many years ago, and, and I, I was upset with her over something, you know, and I can't even remember what it was. It was probably so trivial. And we went to bed, and I was, I was angry, I was upset, and I understand you shouldn't go to bed, shouldn't get, you know, allow the sun to get down on your wrath, but I was upset over something. And um, it was her, probably her response to something that occurred the night before, whatever, I don't know. Anyhow, I remember the Holy Spirit. I, I got up, I was up uh, earlier than she was that morning. And uh, I remember the Holy Spirit as I looked at her and could still feel a little bit of that frustration with her. And I sensed the Holy Spirit saying to me, what makes you right and her wrong? Just because she sees it differently than you do. And I'll tell you what, that was an incredible revelation to me. That may seem like something so very, very simple to you, but that was a revelation to me. And it made me realize at that particular moment how selfish I was being because she didn't see it the way I saw it, you see. And unfortunately, that can be a real divisive issue in many relationships. And what that has to do with and we're going to be passing out a paper here in just a few moments. But what that has to do with is the fact of our personalities are different. We are very different in our personalities. And we're going to be passing out a paper that is going to give you an opportunity. You can take them home with you. And, but I really want you to think about this. And, and you're going to come back. Now, next week we have worship night, okay? So that's, uh, uh, but the, the, the week after that, uh, I believe we have, we'll be back Wednesday night Bible study, right? The week after that. Yeah, we're not into passion play yet at that point. No. And uh, no, it's only be March. Right. Okay. And so anyhow, bring those papers back with you. But we are going to talk about the fact of whether you are an otter or a golden retriever or a beaver or a, a lion. And, uh, you know, we could talk about th those personality traits. I am very strong in the realm of the otter. And, and as much as Pastor Kurt likes to uh, crack his corny, weird jokes, okay, <clears throat> he's very much a beaver, okay? And his wife, Paula, is very much a golden retriever, okay? And so my wife, Debbie, is very much a lion, all right? And we'll just, we'll, we'll discuss some of those personality traits. And when you begin to take a lion and try to uh, mix that with an otter golden retriever, I'm very close in those, in those two areas. Uh, sometimes it takes a lot of adjusting to those personalities. And I think that that's what causes a lot of breakup in marriages oftentimes is because people don't understand that their personalities are different. But that doesn't mean they're bad. That doesn't even mean that they're wrong. It just means that they see things in a different light. They see things in a different way. And yet, if you don't understand that, it could be a cause for great division in a relationship, not just merely in a marriage, but in any relationship, because someone doesn't see it the way you see it. But you have to understand, they're looking at it 
through their personality, not yours, not yours. So anyhow, without any further delay, I, w I certainly want to take enough time to, uh, uh, to have some comments from our, our, our guest this evening, Mr. Wonderful. I mean, this guy is great in relationship. He is the doctor of building relationships, and that's how he got his nickname, Mr. Wonderful, because he always has the right answer. Now, you may be thinking that I'm talking about myself. No, I'm not, okay? So I'm going, would, would you give a warm word of life? Welcome to Mr. Wonderful. Would you do that? Okay. Uh, no, it's not Pastor Sheldon. He's a little timid tonight. Okay, is this, is this on? I think so. No, I don't think so. No. There it is. There it is. Okay. Careful, careful. careful okay. Careful, oh, come careful, on. Careful, careful, careful. This little guy. This, this is Mr. Wonderful. Okay. Now, Pastor, Pastor Sheldon has brought together a number of questions for Mr. Wonderful, and we're going to see what his answers are. Okay. So, Pastor Sheldon, you have a question for Mr. Wonderful? I'm sure my microphone's on there. Okay, make it's sure on. that mic's on so yeah, we hear. Yeah, okay. These are, now, these are difficult questions, but I think he might have the answer. Here's the first one. You ready? Is he ready? He, he's ready. Okay. Yep. Most guys are really uncomfortable talking about their relationship with their wives. What do you say? Well, what do you think about that, Mr. Wonderful? You know, I think it's really important that we talk about our relationship. Okay, good. that was a good, good answer. Good. Good answer. Uh, it's, it's your bowling night out with the boys. She asks you, are you really going out tonight? What do you say, Mr. Wonderful? Let's just cuddle tonight. <laughs> After all, he is Mr. Wonderful. Most Dr. wives Sheldon? aren't as beautiful as usual first thing in the morning. What would you say about that, Mr. Wonderful? Okay, you, wives aren't necessarily as beautiful as usual in the morning. Is that what you said? That's what I said. That was a question, Mr. That's... Wonderful. What do you think about that? Mm, you look so beautiful in the morning. He's such a schmoozer, I tell you. Such a schmoozer. Okay, another question. Your, your wife one. bought a new dress, and no, it really is not complimentary. What do you say? No. You don't look at all fat in that dress. How could anything make you look fat? <laughs> your your mother-in-law has stayed an entire week. You're going nuts. How do you respond to that? Oh, can't your mother stay another week? <laughs> You're at work. <laughs> You're at work pulling your hair out and your honey calls you at an ab the absolute worst moment, how do you respond? Hello, darling. Have I told you I loved you lately? <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. So you get home from work. You're stressed out from all the drama of the day. You walk into the house, and what do you say? Did you have a hard day, honey? Why don't you sit down? And let me rub your feet. Um, I'm really not liking this guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. You hate shopping, and she's hinting about hitting a few more shoe stores and clothing stores. How do you respond to her, Mr. Wonderful? You're going shopping by yourself? How about if I tag along and carry your bags? He's such a liar. Yeah. <laughs> you took the wrong road. You're totally lost. And she's giving you that irritated look. What do you say to her? Actually, I'm not sure which way to go. I'll turn in here and ask directions. <laughs> liar, liar, pants hey. on fire. It ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. 
Okay. What if she's flipping out on you because you didn't fix anything? You watch too much TV. You just are getting fatter and fatter. How would you respond to that, Mr. Wonderful? I love you. <laughs> what do you say to that? Absolutely. What two words would you choose to end any argument? Yes, dear. <laughs> Mr. Wonderful, you've come home from work. The front fender is torn off your new Camaro, and the mailbox is laying in the front yard. What do you think? You've been on my mind all day. That's why I bought you these flowers. Oh, isn't he sweet? <laughs> you walk in the front door after a difficult day at work, looking forward to that hot roast beef she was planning. Now, nothing started because she's been on Facebook, chatting with her friends and watching Jeopardy. You're so upset. What do you say? You know, honey, why don't you just relax and let me make dinner tonight? <laughs> You've been outside working all day, cutting grass, trimming shrubs, washing the car. You're exhausted. But instead of saying, I'm tired, you say... Why don't we go to the mall? Didn't you want some new shoes? <laughs> it's the Super Bowl. You've been waiting for this day the entire season. It's coming down to the last five minutes and the score is tied. And she comes in and says... We need to talk about the kids. What do you say? The ball game really isn't that important. I'd rather spend time with you. Uh, yeah, right, right. Here's the last question, Mr. Mr. Wonderful. You just kicked back, grabbed the remote, your favorite cup of coffee in hand, and you're looking forward to see what's happening in the world when she says, oh, I really wanted to watch that new Hallmark movie. How do you handle that, Mr. Wonderful? I'm not pressing the button. Come on. Yes. No, I'm not doing it. Press it. Press it. Press it. Press it. All right. Here, you take the remote. As long as I'm with you, I don't care what we watch. <laughs> Pastor Sheldon, put this guy back in his cage where he belongs, okay? <laughs> oh, yes, wouldn't it be wonderful if it was always like that? Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> well, Mr. Wonderful is uh, wonderful. Anyhow, I'm going to ask you to stand with me if you would. I want to pray over relationships tonight, not just merely marriages, but over relationships, because I'm sure that there's people in here that have relationships strained in their family, strained in their marriages, strained at work, or relationships, uh, uh, or the failure of, of, of a relationship is making it difficult in your life. And I think that every one of us know that when there's that that burden, when there's that strain in that relationship, it does make things difficult. It's hard to face that person. It's hard to talk with that person. And that's why I believe that it's very, very important. As Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. And I think that we need to in every opportunity. I mean, I saw something like, like this rising in my own family over some situations amongst my, my, my siblings and, and um, and it was an excellent opportunity to rise to the occasion and just squelch any type of, of frustration or anger or any type of hostility that I saw that the enemy was endeavoring to bring in. And it was so wonderful then to see the peace of God just moving into that situation where walls could not be built, barriers could not be built because we would not give way to the workings of the enemy. And so if you've seen that perhaps you've built walls and, and, and barriers in a relationship, maybe you need to pray and ask the Lord, 
what you need to do to tear down that wall in order that that relationship could be restored. And maybe it won't ever be restored to the way it was, but somehow, some way, that in, it, it, it could be restored to some degree that will un, allow now the, the, the peace of God to manifest in your life instead of that anxiety and that, that worry that you're going to see that individual or, or, or when you encounter them, it's going to be so awkward and so difficult. So God doesn't want you to live like that by any means. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for relationships tonight, my God, whether they be relationships between friends, coworkers, or marriages, in marriages, my God. We lift, we lift this family to you right now, my God, the family of God here at Word of Life this evening, my Lord. And we pray that the Holy Spirit would, would indicate, show direction, and give insight on how any walls or barriers that have been built through issues of unforgiveness or words that have been spoken that have, that have just wounded the heart and the soul of, of an individual, of someone here tonight, my God, that you would minister, minister to them and bring peace to them, Lord, and help the, the, the presence of, of your Holy Spirit to truly show them ways to break down those barriers that the enemy has been so successful to build, those barriers that, that have caused strains in relationship, that has caused a, a, a realms of, of, of just heartache and hardship in, in, in life, my God. So I pray that you would help us tonight. Help us, my Lord, that when we see the enemy using a conflict, we see the enemy using uh, some form of a hurt or, or some form of rejection or whatever the case might be, when we see the enemy doing that, we will rise in the power of the Holy Spirit and not allow him to get a foothold in a relationship that's going to cause frustration and hurt and, and, and even anger in our lives, my God. Father, we know that your word tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength and few things will, will, will destroy joy uh, within our lives. Few things like broken relationships and unforgiveness in those relationships. So Father, we, we, lift, we lift our congregation to you, Lord, that we would experience the incredible freedom that comes in, in, in open relationships, wonderful relationships, encouraging relationships, my God. So we thank you now through Christ our Lord, God and Savior. In his precious name we pray. And all of God's people said together in agreement, amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much again for tuning in with us at Word of Life. If God is using Word of Life Church in your life and you would like to partner with us financially, click on the Give link on our website where you will find out how to give and the perfect option for you. You can also text to give right now by texting the amount you would like to donate to 84321 and follow the link. We also want to know what God is doing in your life and encourage you to email us at mystory@wordoflife.church to tell us your story. If you're local to the Greensburg area, come join us some Sunday or Wednesday and bring a friend with you. We love you, God loves you, and we cannot wait for you to join us again.